Hello everybody out there. My name is Ian Boswell and I'm going to walk you through a very basic first time tutorial on how you can get started making your very first game in HTML5 right now on your computer wherever you may be. As long as it's a Windows machine, it's going to have these applications on it, and even Linux and Mac machines will have equivalents to these on them. So, without any further ado, let's get started with the first thing you're going to need. And that's going to be a program called Notepad. To get to Notepad, just type Notepad in your Start menu, and it'll come up. Depending on the type of version of Windows you're having, it should always be able to search for it, or you should be able to find it somewhere in applications. So Notepad, this is going to be the tool we use to actually program our video game. The next thing you're going to want is you want to Google search Google APIs jQuery and find the hosted library site here. You're then going to want to copy this line right here that starts in a script tag and ends in a script tag and you're going to paste this at the top of your page. Now that might have been a little bit complicated, so let's start again. You highlight it by selecting it like so, right click and say copy, and then in this document, you right click and say paste, and that pastes it in. Okay, so that being said, the next program we're going to be using is going to be called MS Paint. Everyone probably has heard of MS Paint at some point. Uh, one of the Beatles actually is famous for doing a lot of artwork in this. So just type paint and it'll come up. We're going to be creating a character that's going to be a mole. And if you're familiar with the game Whack-A-Mole, you might already be able to see where I'm going with this. So to draw a mole, you want to start with a little triangle in the middle of the screen and fill it in with black. Then you want to start with two rounded eyes near the top. And remember, this doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look good. You can just draw that with your mouse the point is that it's something fun to look at that'll impress your friends when they look at this and say, wow, you coded this? Yeah, you can tell them. Just fill it in however you like. I was just dissatisfied with the way that one reflection looked. Fill these in with white. And then you just add your annoying little mouth smile. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a mole. I'm going to make your day pretty bad. All right, so that's our little annoying mole. I'm going to say file save as. I'm going to save it to the desktop and I'm going to call it mole. Okay, that's mole.bmp. If you could, please use PNGs. They're much better. Then we're going to erase his eyes and we're going to erase his mouth and we're going to give him little squinty, angry eyes like so. The other eye. Now he's going to have an angry little mouth scowl. He's going to be going, eh, you hurt me. Why? I'm going to fill that in with white. There we go. And we're going to call that hurt. So we have mole and we have hurt. Now, the next part is the actual programming. So you're going to want to pay very special close attention to this. Here's how we get started. At the start, the top of the page, we want to have HTML. And then we want to say head. And in the head, we're going to put this script. Then we want the body. Think of the body as the stage where the show of the game happens. We close the body and we close the HTML tags. So HTML is like a sandwich. This is the bread, and this is the first layer, and that's the second layer, and then we put things inside of these layers. So without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and indent these to make things a little bit easier on you by using tab. So HTML, head, and then body. And you'll notice that every tag ends with a slash and then a closing tag. So with that being said, let's move on to actually coding our game. I need to create objects, which we're going to target with our code. If you ever heard the term object-oriented programming, these are the objects we'll be targeting. I'm going to call this one mole. And then I'm going to give it the ID of mole1. I'm going to close that div. We're not going to fill it in with anything. We're just going to make it that look that way. The second one will be the same. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy the third. 
And we're going to call this one mole 2 and this one mole 3. Very simple. Now in the head, I'm going to go ahead and add my script tags here, which are script and script. All right, so everything's right there. All right, so now we're going to say okay, uh, jQuery with a capital Q. It's got to be a capital Q. Document ready function. And this means that when everything's loaded in, including the uh, this script here and these elements here, it will uh, begin acting as you'd expect it to. It's basically like a, a ready, set, go sort of trigger function. I'm trying to think of how to, how to word this in simple terms. It just lets you say, you know, start, start, start the engines. We're off to the races. Um, and then here, we're going to have our style tags because everything in HTML5 is done in styles and scripts. So there's some other things too, like plugins, but we're not going to bother with those today. So our mole is going to be a color. Now, to get this color of brown, we need to look in the color mixer and we see that there's a value of red that's 128, a value of green that's 64, and a value of blue that's zero. So we're going to say background dash color colon and then we're going to say RGB and we're opening the bracket and closing the bracket and we're putting in those numbers 128, 64, 0. And then we're adding a little semicolon at the end. And that's going to be our first uh, style. The next style is we're going to say uh, border radius on this thing. So border radius 20 dx. And then we're going to say height 100%. And then we're going to say width 10%. And then for the body, because the body itself is actually going to be a thing we style, we're going to say width 100%, height 100%, overflow hidden. This means that if something goes off the screen, a scroll bar won't show up so we can scroll to it. You'll understand why we want to do that in a second. I'm going to say position absolute on the mole, and I'm going to say uh, top 100%. So that means it's going to be 100% away from the top, so it's going to be at the bottom of the page, because that's 100% of the way from the top. So we can go ahead and save this and we can just go ahead and save it on our desktop as mole.html. And now if we open this with Chrome, what's going to happen is nothing. You won't be able to see anything at all. But if we took away this body control right here and said save and then refreshed, if I scroll down, I can start to see the beginning of my mole. And already I can see that 20 pixels is not enough roundness. So we're going to need to add a bit more. So to do that, I'm going to say 100 px. And I'm going to save, get rid of the body tag for this one, save, refresh, and now you can see it's nice and round. Now one other thing we can give these moles is ears. So I'm going to go ahead and in these I'm going to put a div, and I'm going to give it the class of left ear. I'll just go ahead and close it up like that, and then I can put in another div and I can give it the class of right ear. And all that might seem a little confusing, so I'm gonna to try to tab this out so you can see the structure, is we have left ear, which opens and closes, and right ear, which opens and closes. And then we have mole one, which opens here and closes here. It's like a sandwich again. So that's the opening and the closing. And then we'll do the same thing for this one, just pasting in left ear and right ear. And then the same one here, pasting in left ear and right ear. So. How do we style left ear? Well, this is going to be same background color. We're going to give this thing a border radius of about 100 as well. We're going to say uh, we're going to say uh, yeah position absolute left. 0px and even give it a float left. So I'm just going to go ahead and using the inspect element value of the browser min width I'm going to go ahead and give this a width of let's say 20% and then padding top 20% there we go 
Maybe a little bit bigger. What do you think? What do you think? Well, about 30. Is 30 round enough? I think 30 is round enough. Okay, so we're going to say min width 30%, padding top 30%. We're just going to go ahead and paste those values right on in there. Like so. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing for the right ear. Okay. So we're just going to paste this whole left ear and put in right. There's left ear and the right ear should not have shouldn't have that problem so i'm going to say left and it's it, since it's since it's uh 30 percent we should just have to move it left 70 percent because 70 plus 30 is 100. so right ear will be left 70 percent there we go done now the reason i'm using percentages for all this is so that it's dynamic so as we resize the page the mole will resize with it now let's go ahead and give him his face. So I'm going to go ahead and say background image URL, and we're going to put in mole.bmp. And now you're going to notice something. Hmm, that's oddly large and not the size I want it to be. That's because we have to now say background width, or sorry, sorry, background size. 100%. And so now it will fit 100%. But oh, wait, we've got all these problems going on here. Now the moles are, you know, his, his face has basically been duplicated many, many times. So to fix that, we're going to now say uh, background repeat, no repeat. So it doesn't repeat the head anymore. But the ears are in the way. So we're going to say Z index negative one. And this moves it across the plane of Z, which is the third dimension, into the background. So it's not behind the head. All right, so now there's our mole. His head's nice and squeezed in there. You might have to adjust that depending on how your drawing looks and turns out. All right, so that's our mole. And one thing we can also do for the mole is we can say border uh, radius. We can actually change the border radius instead of saying 100 px. We do 100px, 100px, 0px, 0px. And that should change it so that the bottom half is not that way. And there's three moles, right? But we only ever saw one. And that's because you have to think a little bit mathematically. You know that, the, that time when, when somebody said, nothing you learn in math class will ever be applicable in real life? Well, now it is. So I want to put in a 10% gap here and have a mole. And I have a 10% gap here and have another mole. And then I want to have a 10% width mole here. So each of these is 10. Okay, so the value is 10 plus 10 with a 10 in the middle. And then finally 10 and 10. So knowing this, okay, how much space needs to be here in the middle? Well, 10 and 10 is 20. 10 and 10 is also 20. 20 and 20 is 40, 50. So we, need, needs, we know it needs to be 50. And then what's half of 50? 25, the other half is 25. So now we know these are our values. So for the first one, we need it to be from the left 20, uh, no, 10 pixels. So it needs to be 10, uh, not 10, but 10 over. The next one is 10 plus 10 plus 25. So this one's gonna be 45 over. So 10, 45, I don't have no idea why I'm writing with a mouse. And then lastly, we have 45 plus 25. Mole one is going to be left 10%, mole 2, left 45%, and then mole 3. Now you might notice I'm targeting the ID with a hashtag, and I'm targeting the class with a period. So this is the mole class, and this is the mole ID. All right? So moving on, we now want to move our moles from the bottom of the screen to the top. And to do this, we have to do this. So we say jQuery, and we put in dot mole, because we're targeting the class. And we're going to say animate. And then we're just going to say top 
We're actually going to put those in quotation marks. So top colon 0% or PX is 0, it doesn't really matter. And then we're going to give it about 5 seconds, so we say 5,000, which is, you know, that 5,000 milliseconds is 5 seconds. So we say that. And now if we save this and refresh, the moles will move towards the top. That's fine. Also, I thought I put this one over 90, and I think I did my math wrong. It should be 80. I guess 45 plus 25 is 80. What is wrong with me today? All right, so there we go. Everybody makes mistakes. These are our moles. 10% here, 25, 25, and 10% there, and each one of them is 10. Now we got to hit the moles. So how are we going to hit the moles? Well, I propose this. Hover. And then we give it a function inside the hover event. Now because we are hovering the mole, it knows the mole is the one we're hovering. So instead of saying mole, we say this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to animate it down. Well, actually, first we're going to stop it from animating. Stop, open bracket, close, yeah, and then close. And then we're going to say animate, and we're going to give it a very fast move speed of about like 300, I think should do. And we're going to say top, and then this resets it, so we're going to say 100%. So we need it to reset all the way back down to being 100% away from the top. So it'll move all the way down to the bottom of the screen and be completely off the screen. Okay? So now let's try it out. So if we refresh and I hover, he goes down, down, down. Now we've whacked the moles. So bam, 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 they're gone. But that's not cool enough because after it's done animating, we want it to do more stuff. And also we want the face to change. So another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna say jQuery this, and we're gonna do CSS and then for the CSS, this is what style sheet is. Content style sheet, we're taking this style here. We already have the background image here with mole.bmp. So we're gonna say this CSS background image. And now instead of using a colon, you use a, a comma for these. And then URL mole.bmp. So exactly how it's written here. But we're gonna change the mole.bmp to hurt that BMP because as you remember the mole went ouch and you know we want we want him to go ouch and, and, and you know actually go down so we want him to have that expression change ow 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 great that's exactly what we're looking for right so now to enhance this even further when it's done moving all the way down we want the mole to come back up so after this is done we then follow it up with another function staying within the same uh, uh, bracket area. So, so I know this is gonna be kind of complicated to, to wrap your head around, but basically this is the end of the animate opening all the way down here. So we're gonna do a lot of stuff in between that. When it's done animating, that's gonna trigger something. What's it gonna trigger? How about this? jQuery this, animate, and now we literally just can copy this. We can say stop animate top 100% or no, sorry, it's top zero. We can copy this part, sorry. This 5,000. And of course we wanna set its face back. So we'll copy this in as well and change hurt.bmp back to mole.bmp. Now, what follows is essentially a game. There is no scoring system to the game, but the game is now yours. It's now been easily created in just a few lines of code. This is all of the, the script that's making the thing work. This is the style that's making it work. It's fun, it's easy, it's simple, and all you have to do is hover on the moles and hit them with your mouse. Bonk, 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 and keep them down. And anybody can do this. This takes very little actual skill or knowledge to be able to do. And you'll find that this alone is quite fun. 
But you can go further, of course, if you want to go further. You can make it so that if the animation actually completes and they get all the way to 100%, for instance, that it prints a game over message. That all the models uh, fade out and it says, you lost, try again, and then it starts the whole thing over again. So we could do that. Uh, or, even better, we could have that and a score in the top right that tells you how many moles you've bonked on the head. Let's go ahead and do the second one I mentioned. And then if we want to, we'll move around to doing the game over message. So to do this within our body, we need a class that's going to be called score. So class equals score. And then we're also going to have the word score in there and say zero. Now we're going to go ahead and take this class of score and we're going to say font family Arial. Uh, let's say font size. Let's give it about 10 VW. Is that too big? Uh, I think I can test it now. Wait, no. Position absolute. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and say uh, right 0px and see how that turns out. So we've got score there. Let's give it a bit of a margin. So we'll say right, uh, how about 5%? And I think we can shrink it down to about 5VW. Actually, I think 10 is a bit much. So there we go. So there's our score. So this mole actually comes up in front of it. Those ears are actually behind it. So we're going to fix its Z index as well. Negative 1 or negative 2, however you want it. Remember, if you have a background, you'll have to make it more and more negative, so I don't recommend using negative margins normally, but I'm trying to be fast here and educate you a little bit, and I'm sure you can come up with much better ways of doing this once you put your mind to it, and that's what I'm really trying to encourage you to do, is play around with this and have fun and don't be worried about breaking stuff, because you can always fix it by checking here in your index that's going to be showing you what all's going on here. So, okay, so now we're hitting the moles, but we want the score to go up every time we hit them. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable var, var score equals zero. Okay, that might actually be a little bit hard to understand. So I'm actually going to say var add equals zero. And now what we're going to do is on the hover, we're going to say add equals add minus negative one, which is the same as adding one. And that basically is going to increase zero to one every time we hover them. And from there, actually, you know, let's let's actually have this trigger when it's when it's off the stage and it's completed the, the run. So that way, if you hover it multiple times, you won't be able to add up the score by just, you know, hitting the same mole on its way down. So we don't want you to be able to cheat. <laughs> So we add the score once it's all the way down and it's, it's actually been knocked off the stage. And once that's done, we then say uh, to the score itself, jQuery score, we give it an HTML value. And the HTML is just going to be, uh, I believe we used a capital S or a lowercase s, uh, capital S score, colon, space, and we need to put that space in there, then we add plus, add, and that's going to be the HTML we put in. So now, every time we hit a mole, score increases just like that. It's basically Flappy Bird at this point. If you've ever played Flappy Bird, this is, that's, that's kind of all it is. You're going through pipes and it adds the score for each one you hit. Now, if you want to get really cool and advanced, you could have it measure the amount of time that's traveled and it give you more points by how close you let the mole get to the top of the screen without touching it. And only when the mole touches does, does it uh, trigger the game over event. I'm just throwing some ideas out there. But right now we're trying to keep things super basic because I don't want to take up too much more of your time. So lastly, we want to trigger something if the mole reaches the top of the page and the animation hasn't stopped. For this, we'll add a function, and what we're going to go ahead and do is mole yeah, j 
query mol CSS top 100%. And then I'll go ahead and replace the HTML within the score field. So I'm going to take this and just copy it here. And instead of saying score, it'll just say game over. There we go. All right, so if I let it reach the top, boom, game over. And if you want to get even fancier, you don't have to do the CSS like that. You could just have it animate to the top 100%. Or you could animate some other like victory condition you feel the mole should go through. Or just spin the text around, you know, do whatever. And we'll make it so that if you click on game over, or we could actually, actually we could add a try again button. So what we'll do is we'll say jQuery uh, and then in the score field, we'll uh, append div class equals try again try again div jQuery try again click function and we're going to say start alright And that starts it over. Oh, and of course, when we start it over, the first thing start should actually do, of course, is uh, set add to zero. And then set the score to read score plus add, which in this case will be zero. So there we go, score zero. Get the game over, try again, and it starts over again. And then we can start ranking up our score by hitting the moles. All right. I hope that you found this video to be somewhat informative. Giant question mark at the end? I don't know. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, please leave them in the comments. If you're wondering how uh, uh, you could move this onto the web, I'm sure there are tons of videos going over that. If you want to wonder about how to put this on a cell phone, there are also a lot of answers to that question. Running this website, if you put it on the web on your phone, will of course also solve the problem. And if you want to just play this game and pick it apart, uh, I will be putting it up on deathkiller.com as soon as I get around to doing that. So you can actually test it out yourself and play some whack-a-mole. Yeah, it's going to be great. So, there we are. Also, it doesn't trigger game over again. Why doesn't it trigger game over again when it reaches the top? Why does it only do it one time? It is because the game over function itself needs to be a separate function? Probably would be my guess. So I'm going to just say function game over... Put that in there. And trigger this like so. All right. We'll see if that works. So we want to get a game over. Try again, and if it fails, we should get another game over. Good. All right, so now we've got it infinitely looping, so the game repeats. Yay, all things taken care of. Thanks for watching, I guess, and I hope that you learned something. And uh, yeah, you all have great lives now. Bye-bye. Never stop learning, never stop researching stuff. Just don't ever stop. You'll always find there's room for improvement every single day.
That's the secret to all of this.